Okay. Welcome everybody. This is Coach's Corner with Coach Ashley and Coach Malik. We are coming to you today with um, a really great topic, um, food that we eat. We're going to kind of interview Malik here before and after the gym. We talked about this in our last episode and we wanted to kind of bring it full circle for you guys and talk about it today so we can really break it down and give you guys some ideas of what you can eat and give you some inspo. Um, we are going to go ahead and start a, with a quote for you guys today. And then at the very end, we'll give you a little bonus quote as well. All right, Malik, what's the quote today? Quote is, I heard this from, so we're reading this. I think I, we talked about this atomic habits book, and this was a quote from that genes do not eliminate the need for hard work. They clarify it. They tell us what we need to work hard on. Love that. That's awesome. I was, I was, I was really excited about that before. Um, but I think it relates well because something that I see a lot as a coach training a lot of kids is that the people that tend not to work as hard. And if you watch Friday night lights, booby miles, uh, the people who have those natural God given talents tend to, when they're younger or more on the immature side, not work as hard as someone who has more ambition or more, you know, passion for a goal. Um, so they kind of take it for granted. They do. They, it's like, they take their genes as like a. Well, I'm here, so I don't have to work as hard. So they don't eliminate, they clarify. Yeah, and that's so good too, because I mean, that's first of all, a great, great. Like if you got strong legs, have strong legs. Like if you're a big guy, be a big guy. You know, if you're a little guy, you know, work on your speed, but like work with the things that you have. Don't be ashamed of them. But uh, yeah, something I see all the time. Yeah, it's a, it's a great movie. Great person to reference because he's just such a good example of that. But it also, I think just like you were saying, it just helps you kind of like, not fight what you were given yep. like whatever you were given just work with it and maybe like make that part of you like something that is either better stronger than other people but then there's also other things that you could work out that maybe you're not going to be as strong at and that you can um work towards as a goal to like enhance yeah yeah That's we, great. there's always going to be a bigger fish as my brother would say yeah, you know, like if they're talking about like girls though. No, that, but like, you know, there's always gonna be a, you know, a, a bigger, stronger person. There's always going to be a, a richer business person. There's always going to be a faster sprinter. There's always going to be, you know, funnier person. There's always gonna be someone better. So, but there's also gonna be someone worse, you know, there's, yeah. there's always a bigger and smaller fish. So having and what you could do is surround yourself with those people. Yes. Because then you'll you will then push yourself to be better and achieve, you know, like, like, let's just say you're hanging out with a guy that's like squatting 500 pounds and you're like at only 300 or whatever, you're going to be a lot stronger than a lot of other guys, a lot of other guys only squatting like a hundred, 150, like half your weight, but you're half your, Oh, okay. Sorry, Bubba. But if you're hanging out with a guy that's squatting the 500 pounds, as opposed to the guy that's only squatting a hundred, you are going to push yourself way harder because you're already stronger than that guy. So he is going to want to push himself to be like you, but you need someone to also push you. So hanging out with those guys that are stronger, smarter, have more money, have whatever, like those being around those type of people in life is just going to help you to push yourself and achieve more. True. Up level. You're uplifted. Uplifted. Yep, up level for sure. So the topic of the day, food to eat before and after the gym. Shall we begin? Yes. Come on. Okay. So um this is actually something that um is gonna be like we're gonna break it down to sections and we're gonna actually ask Malik about his prior seasons. Cause there's always a season where you're like either bulky. I'm interrupt real quick. Sorry, sorry for interrupting you. I just before we start, make sure everyone can see the incense. I did want to. What's it smell it. like? This is my. Oh, it's right. And it's going towards the four agreements. Uh, <laughs> it smells like. Um, you can't really. You don't want to do that. But uh, oh, that was nasty. It smells. I don't know. To be honest, like nature. It smells like incense. You know. Nice. But the box said it was good fortune. So that's why I, I bought it. It was a green one. And it said good fortune incense. So. So that's how we know it's going to be a good episode today. That's how we know. So <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Let's see. Don't forget about those incense back there. Okay, so um, there have been different seasons where you have to apply different things and eat different things, right? So when Malik was, let's just say when you were in bulking season, can you give us examples of what you ate before going to the gym when you were bulking? And you ha you had said that you had done things like an hour before, and then there's other foods you would eat like 15 minutes before. So maybe you can give us an example for both. 
Yes, definitely different phases. So when you're bulking and cutting, you're going to have different foods before and after the gym. But when I was bulking, I would have usually a burrito because it has everything, your carbs, fats, proteins, and I love burritos. Um, I would go to, uh, I used to go to San Jose Taqueria in San Rafael, but my guys, I'm sorry, but you have failed me over and over on the guac. And last time it was like a runny, runny guac and I will never go to a place with runny guac. So anyway, <laughs> San Jose was usually a spot or, um, you know, if I had like time before, so like she said, an hour, if it was right before my workout, I wasn't having a burrito. I wasn't cause you know, that's not going to feel good. Um, but if I had time for like an hour, it would be like a burrito, a sandwich, something with carb, a protein, and a fat. So like my body could just have have it all be fueled. If it was like 15, 20 minutes or 10 minutes, it was a little bit, you know, eat some before I leave the house. But I'm going to the gym. I want to have something and I haven't eaten yet in the day. It could have been like a smoothie or something smaller or like an apple, like a fruit, um, a fruit smoothie. Two rocks once. But uh what about so, oatmeal? Oatmeal was would be probably if I was in the breakfast time and I had like I was gonna take my time driving to the gym. You just get punched. No, but he's acting crazy right now, so I might get yeah. Mike Tyson right there. But uh if it was like in the morning and I had oatmeal, it was probably like an hour, like a slow drive to the gym, 30 minutes, okay. 40, because oatmeal is a little slower. Yeah. Um apples, bananas didn't work for me. Some people eat bananas, but for me, it just did not work with my stomach. But like a smoothie wood, an apple I wood. Think, I think it also depends on the banana. Cause if you have like a very green banana, it's like very starchy and full of fiber and it might not feel good. But like a more ripe banana is a little bit more on like the sugary side and easily digestible. So banana bread, banana bread maybe, but yeah, bananas are not great. So I guess it just depends. It depends. And when was so when Malik says he's bulking, when he was bulking he was gaining like a pound a week sometimes like two, more yeah like two pounds a week but i was eating like seven thousand calories yeah but at that time it was a lot before it was like three big meals with like normal sized meals just like snacks in between like i was eating probably like throughout the whole day now something i've heard from a kid though that i've been coaching he's been gaining probably consistently a pound or two he's 240 pounds and he was 229 in february so he's been gaining a good amount and what he says, he can't eat a lot at once. Like he's big, but not like like big and and big. He's just like big and lean, or big and like he has muscle, but he's not, you know he doesn't hold a lot on him. And he says he can't eat a lot of meat, like big meals. He eats a lot throughout the day. Yeah, like he's constantly eating through his classes. He's just like he'll work out and then eat and then do something and eat. Like he's always eating. Yeah. Okay. Way. So. Obviously, this is bulking and we're not always in bulking season. So we're also going to be in, sh we're also going to shred. We're also going to be in maintenance mode. So we're just talking about bulking right now with your bulking, like during that time after your workout, what else would, what's like an example of what you would eat after bulking season? After no, sorry. After, after your workout, but we're still in bulking season <laughs> after the workout. So before was that after I would have the biggest meal of the day. <laughs> Okay. I'll have were, were you a, a morning or afternoon or night worker outer? What was your schedule? Usually 11 a.m. Somewhere okay. on like 11. And I still do 11. Like I like 11 is like my time. Um, 10 30, you know, because I, I train in the morning. So I train in the morning. I like to decompress from that. And then I like to go work out. So he training means he's has his kids. He's, he's training. Yeah, I coach. I coach in the morning. That I decompress and that I work at 11. And then even when I was a personal trainer, I'd train in the morning. I'd like to go get breakfast, chill, and then go back to the gym before night sessions or night class. So I still like, my body's probably just used to that. Where so I, that means you have a giant lunch? Um, I have a humongous lunch. And then I'll, yeah. And th yeah. So then if I'm cutting, but since we're bulking, if I'm bulking, I'll have like two dinners. I'll have that huge lunch and then I'll have dinner. And I'll have a huge dinner. Whereas okay. if I'm cutting, I won't have that second dinner. Okay. So what would you give us an example of your lunch and your dinner while this is still bulking season? Bulking season after workout, I'm going at, at then at 25. I can't do it anymore just because of like how I feel when I eat it. But then I was going to Chipotle, double meat, you know, everything, <laughs> fill that bowl. Put it all in there. It's falling out, sir. Put it back in. I'm just <laughs> double meat, double everything. Double everything. And I'll get chips and a drink. And that'll just be like, again, meal number one. And that was like a thousand, twelve hundred calories. And then I would have like, you know, the pastas. I was like, 
you know, it has like four servings in those little pasta boxes. You buy like a penne air whole yeah. thing, you pour it all in there. And then I would cook it all, you know, whatever, have uh, either a sausages in there or like ground beef. I had a lot of ground beef in there. And then um, I would have, uh, sometimes I would even put like, depending on the type of pasta, eggs. I put like eggs in my pasta. So always a protein in there and just smother it in like pasta sauce or whatever. And I would eat as much of that as I can. I think that is like 2000 calories. I think that's like, if you have a whole thing of pasta with sausage or like, you know, ground beef, it's just like a lot of calories. So yeah. Uh, I can't do that, but uh, you eat, you eat as much as you can of that until like you can't take a little break and then go back. So, like you said before, it's like seven thousand calories a day. So, how much? Um, if you remember when you were bulking, um, how much protein? Okay, so also just so you guys know, we're talking about like when Malik was like twenty five, and yeah. yeah. So, like we're saying, there's always different phases that you're going through. So then you'll eat differently. So, how much protein? And this was eating seven thousand calories a day. So yeah. So how much protein were you getting? Uh, then like two fifty. And carbs. Seven hundred. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with all that pasta. <laughs> Yeah, it was ridiculous. Chips, I'd, I'd malt the jalapeno, jalapeno kettle chips, 15 minutes, bag gone. Yeah. It was the whole big, bag? Whole bag. Yeah, it was insane. Okay, so we're like, let's just say protein shakes. How many a day were you having? Uh, probably two or three. Okay. So yeah, so after a workout, that was in there. So after a workout, during uh, bulking, 100% protein shake was in there. Okay. And w when you were making protein shakes, how much protein do you were? 50, about 50? 50 per. 50. So you were having like three. Scoops. What was that? It was two scoops, but that was 50. It wasn't in like 50 per scoop, but it was like a big scoop. Um, okay. Yeah. Cause if you're eating, if you're trying to have 7,000 calories, it's so hard to eat that many calories. That's why I always tell people that if you're trying to bulk, the easiest way to consume calories is by liquids, is yeah. by smoothies, milk and stuff like that. So you were having like three smoothies a day with like 50 grams of protein in them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow. That's wild. So as you can see, bulking, it's just, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Don't try this at home. But if you are trying to bulk, it's exactly what you need to do. Like you train how to get stronger. You're not just like going in the gym and like kind of pushing the weight. You're like challenging yourself. So when yeah. you're eating, you're trying to grow your body. You need to challenge it and just like really eat the calories. Yeah. So definitely upping the protein, upping the carbs, you still need fats in there. Yeah. Um, but that is actually something Malik and I could always help you with. Like if you need it, if you're like, I want to bulk, but I have no idea how much I should be eating. Yeah. We could always if you have personalized comments or certain that you want us to go more into put in the comments and put, this is me. This is how much I, you know, my height, my age, my weight, and this is what I've been doing. Boom. We'll answer that easy. We'll answer it. Yeah. So give us just an example of like two of your favorite meals during your bulking season. Obviously you said Chipotle, a big pasta bowl, protein shakes. Um, you said oatmeal, uh, breakfast, burritos. Pesto pizza. Mm, that sounds so good. That's going to be your dinner tonight. <laughs> I might, dude, I was, I got some pizza. This is a little side tangent. I got a pizza in North Beach this weekend. It was so bad. I was so pissed. I was so, I never have bad pizza at North Beach. I got, I was like, you know what, tonight I'm going to stay home because I stayed home this night because like, I'm going to get a large pizza and I'm going to be just like, you know, I'm going to watch TV. I was like, dude, I'm going to do that night, you know, because I don't do those nights at all. Not, not anymore. Like, I, you know, I try not to watch TV or anything. That's why I'm always moving. But uh, so I was like, tonight's going to be one of those nights where I'm just, I watched Dune. I don't know if you ever watched Dune. It's pretty cool. Um, But it was uh the most, it was like, I tried to take the slice off and it just like took the the cheese off so i just oh. the dough and it was like one of those types of pizzas where the cheese was was like hard, it was hardening and i'm like i still have this whole large pizza in front of me dude uh, what am i gonna do so i like microwave some slices kind of revived it but man a good pesto pepperoni pizza was my favorite like chicken pesto pesto uh, pepper pizza oof because it has so many calories and i just would eat it yeah. eat the whole thing and you would add a protein on it so you do like chicken and something else yeah yeah so i always had a protein on it that's that's something I've always, i was always trying to do but again like i said this was during a big bulking season so maybe on a normal bulking season it would just be like a slice or two you know of pesto pizza you don't need a whole large pizza um but uh those were my before before and after it was like a you know burrito or something of everything was um i'm trying to think of other stuff i had besides burrito like the oatmeal like i was saying the oatmeal was before with eggs i'd have eggs on oatmeal was another mm -hmm. one that i have a long yeah. time and then i'm trying to think of one other example i, I leftovers from the night before because i wouldn't finish always the pasta so that was another one that i would eat a lot and then uh 
you know, there's so many things. You're, in, you're an in and out guy too. Yes, true. I would eat out. I would eat out. I would have my little in and out things. That nice. I would eat out. You know, <laughs> in and out, Chipotle. I don't care. I'll go. I'll go to McDonald's. I'm not even afraid <laughs> to say it. I would, if I was bulking, I would easily go to McDonald's. I don't do that again as much anymore because you got to pick your battles, you know? But yeah. when, when I was bulking, man, it was uh, no holds bars. I don't even know what that means. Oh, it means like no rules. It's, you know, fights, <laughs> no holds bars match. It's like, uh, I think in wrestling, if you hold the bar, it's like, all right, you know, separate, you know, like, got it. Break, and it's like no holds bars. Okay. No rules. Everything, everything goes. I was eating every, yeah, I was. Yeah, okay. So was on the it. flip side. Yeah. Now we're going shredding. We're going shredding, but let me last point because I know <clears throat> some kids will watch this and just for like a quick clip for them, like if you are really trying to bulk and really add on weight this is the easiest way I know how that I've given to plenty of kids that actually they're starting to work. You just whatever, you don't change anything for the next three days. Do not change a thing. Next three days, do not change a thing. Track everything you eat. Every little thing you eat, you just write on a piece of paper. It's not that hard. You track it. You look on the back of it. Oh, 500 calories and you write it. Every single thing you eat, drink, look at, smell, everything. Once you're done with that for three days, you get the average of how many calories that you were eating, you know, the average, and you add a thousand. You add a thousand calories to that, you're going to gain a pound or two a week. You know, keep the same types of foods, same types of everything, just add the thousand. And I promise, promise, promise that will help you uh, gain weight. Now, if you can't track for three days, that's on you. And like Malik was saying, no joke. One of the easiest ways is a protein shake because you can, this is sounds wild, but you could easily make a 500 calorie protein shake. She ain't lying. I used to do it all the time. We got 10 minutes. So okay. we'll, we'll be putting, it's less food anyway. So it's less, less, yeah, food. less food, less time. We laugh at our own jokes. Probably an issue anyway. So we'll go, uh, shredding pre-workout an hour before was usually nothing. I usually didn't eat. Actually, now I think about it. When I cut, don't eat before the workout. I didn't have so much in me from the dinner before. If I were to eat in a pre in a state of trying to shred pre-workout wise, I'd have a pre-workout, like a drink, a coffee, or, um, you know, the same thing, like an apple or a smoothie or something that's li on the lighter side. Pre-workout. Post-workout cutting, same thing. Biggest meal of the day. How many meals were you having a day? Three. But they're like, depends, actually. Um... When I was at Orange Theory, it was probably the best I've ever cut. And All the cardio? I was running a mile a day. I was eating nothing before I worked out. So I was like, hurry up and work out so I can eat. You know, I would not eat until I worked out. I would drink water and, eat and drink coffee, but I wouldn't eat like a meal. A mile a day, and I would eat maybe two medium meals. How many protein shakes? One. Okay. So two medium meals plus a protein shake. And those two medium meals would be, I probably wouldn't go to Chipotle and have the whole thing. If I went to Chipotle, it would be like... Just the meat. I'll go in there and just get two two servings of the meat. Like six bucks. So actually, super high protein. I actually might do that. Very high protein. Um, I'd have carbs one meal. And that's like five days of the week. Two days of the week, I would have carbs whenever. I still, you know, was human. Um, <laughs> two days of the week, i do whatever. But five days of the week. And that was, uh, I don't know. It, was, it wasn't like, it didn't seem that hard to do when I did it like that. Because like, I still ate a good amount after my workout. And then I'll have just like a smaller meal at dinner time before bed. You know what I mean? Well, and you said, you had mentioned that from bulking to shredding, yeah. um, you didn't cold turkey, just like stop eating. Stuff. You would yes. kind of like wean off. So yeah. instead of having like a burrito an hour before, you'd have just a simple like bagel or something eat like, like that. Yes. Yeah. When you transition from bulking to cutting, you don't want to extremely change up your calories. Some bodies are okay with that. Some react a little differently. But you do want to make sure that like, if you're going a lot of calories before and you're going to a little calories, that you kind of do it in a progressive, progressive way. Thank you. Or a yeah. way. Night, night. Which makes more sense. And then you're not just like starving out of nowhere. Backwards the whole time. And then she comes in with that little, you'll see. Oh, it. I'm always listening. We're six minutes in or we're six, six minutes to go. Okay. Um, so um, what, what I was going to, huh? Summary, summary so far of what we've gone over. Yeah. But also. Can you tell people like what your because they're gonna want to know like what were your calorie goals and protein goals and carb goals when you were shredding? So then when I was shredding, the protein was probably like 180, 150. Carbs was probably around 250, 350. And fats were low. Fats were like uh 20. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 38. I just wouldn't have any like there's no fat in rice or like you yeah. know, so I just wouldn't have it. Um okay. but if I did have it, like if it was like 
you know, I had a sandwich or a burrito, you know, a burrito during that middle meal. Then at night I would have like, you know, less carbs. So I'd be like, if I had like 50 grams or 60 grams of fat, I'd have like 200 grams of carbs. But if I had no fat, then I'm going to have, I'm, I'm, this is going to be made up somewhere. I'm going to eat. So, uh, so the biggest thing is like, you're very intuitive. So you can tweak things here and there. Some people are like, super strict and they need everything right now. So again, if you guys like need something that you need to like see physically or have needed to be written out, like Malik was saying, like tracking, we use my fitness pal sometimes tracking is huge because you can physically see what you're in, like taking in and stuff. It's easier for you to add a thousand calories. Cause you can see how to add it. All that stuff is just easier. You don't need to be like a total maniac with tracking and make your life miserable, but you need to <laughs> like track a few times because it's going to help you. It's just in your brain. It's going to, you're going to basically, you're going to eventually become just like how you're explaining just yep. intuitive and you can tweak it when you need to. Yep. I was going to say, I, I, I wasn't always intuitive. It just, it takes time tracking, yeah. tracking. You start to notice these things over time. So, yeah. So like just really quickly, cause we're running out of time guys. Um, what, what we were talking about was bulking and shredding. So bulking season, Malik's having like 7,000 calories a day. So you have to eat, you're having like three protein shakes a day. Those protein shakes have like 50 grams of protein. Um, you're eating anything like burrito oatmeal, something heavy before maybe, maybe like an hour before. And if you need to eat again, you know, just right before, like 15 minutes before have an apple or something, it depends on your, like, you know, digestion and stuff, but a quick snack before would be something simple, like an apple, strawberries, grapes, like some kind of light fruit like that. Some people can do bananas. Malik couldn't. So it just depends. And then he was having like that, big, like a breakfast like that. But after the gym, it was like a protein shake. It was a really big meal. He had gave examples, like go to in and out and get, you know, like a couple double doubles, have um, a Chipotle bowl with double protein. Um, you're, you're really focusing on high protein intake, high carb intake. And then you could also have another big dinner. So you're having like a big bowl of like pasta and some type of protein. You're having um, rice and some type of protein. You're having um, any other grain that you want, maybe you like quinoa or whatever it is, but it's definitely protein and carb focused. And it's a big meal to be able to hit 7,000 calories a day. It's wild. It's a lot. And it is going to push you when it comes to shredding. It's the complete opposite. So if you go from bulking to shredding, bulking to cutting, just ease your way in because it could be really drastic to go from 7,000 calories to like, what would you say? 2000? Yeah. Like 22. Yeah, that's a lot. So that's a, that's a big dip. So for you to do that, it might, and it might just, some people can do cold Turkey for some people it just doesn't work. So just like kind of ease your way down to that 2200 and then it'll feel a little bit better, but you're instead having maybe no meal before your workout, maybe a small meal, maybe it's just some fruit, maybe like a carb. You could have a very light protein shake before. Um, and then I thought about a parfait. Oh, I love parfaits. Great. Idea. So a parfait before that's a great idea. Bulking is always easier because you can just eat all these things. Shredding is going to be harder. Um, but like something light like that, a parfait, um, and then afterwards, again, you're going to have another bigger meal, but it's just not going to be as big, right? It's going to be something that's satiating because you just worked out. You want to make sure it's protein heavy. Um, you could have a protein shake. And um, like Malik was saying, he would go to Chipotle and have like a literal bowl with just two scoops of meat. Yep, yep. <laughs> so super high protein. Yep. Um, and then another meal at the end of the night. And that would just be, again, a lighter meal. So it's just less calories. All this stuff, you guys, you can get written out for you. You can get, we can like really break it down depending on like your age, weight, height. Um, but it is easier for you to like, for us to break it down for you. So you have goals to hit. Right. Facts. That's it though. Hopefully that was helpful. It was helpful. It was good. It was to the point. And uh, we're now going to tease. It was going to be a bonus for today, but. It's now going to be a teaser for the next episode, which is we're going to talk about your third place. And if you don't have one, maybe you should find one. You like that? I like it. I like little, the teaser. With a little twist, a little swish. <laughs> and yeah. uh, All right, you guys. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. We um, always are open to any questions that you guys have. So if you listen to the episode and you're like, I need a little bit more, um, drop some questions below and Follow us on Instagram. I'm Coach Ashley, Coach Ashley S, and then Coach Malik. And we'll see you at the next one. Bye. Yeah.